Welcome to worship with the people of Freens Lutheran Church. During this challenging time, we know God's grace is sufficient, and God's love is expressed in caring for each other. Whoever you and whatever questions you have, we welcome you. Well, it certainly has been a trying week. Today's reading, the thing that stood out to me were the concept of the have and the haves not. So maybe you can relate to that right now. But I think the theme that comes through in the reading is that we are to live generously. We are to love the Lord with all our heart, mind, and body, and strength. The scribes were the haves, the poor widow was the have not. But she gave all that she had. She lived generously. Now is the time for us to live generously. Let us pray. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive us, renew us, and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one. And there is no and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one another's neighbors as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And in his teaching he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplace and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and, for a pretense, make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Please join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, use this time of reflect reflection to inspire our imagination to not only hear words, but to grasp how you would lead us into the life you have called us to live. For Jesus' sake, amen. There's a story handed down from the westward journeys of the 1800s. The story tells about a pump and the promise that greeted visitors who were crossing the Mojave Desert. Whether or not the story is true or apocryphal, I do not know. But I do know the story gives us a true message. 
At the midpoint of the trail that extends from Arizona to the west coast, there stood a wooden shack. Inside the shack was a pump. Looped around the pump handle was a well-worn Civil War canteen filled with water. The impulse for every thirsty traveler was to immediately quench their parched throats, but a note attached to the canteen strap offered this counsel. Friend, this pump draws water from a deep aquifer. Ample water is available to refresh you, but first you must pour all the water in the canteen down the well shaft in order to prime the pump. We implore you, trust this is true. Refill the canteen to provide travelers who follow as those who came before you once did. At this critical juncture in our community, nation, and world, we too face choices respective to trust and exhibiting concern for the well-being of others. The message today calls us to ponder what Jesus called the great commandment, a way of living with you and I, poor who we are, and what we have into loving God and loving neighbor. Right now, generosity and compassion are difficult to well up while an epidemic beyond our ability to imagine or fix evokes worry and tempts all of us to employ a survivalist mentality. Hence, it's very good that the ability to love does not originate with ourselves. Rather, it is embedded in the very nature of God. Through the second half of his gospel, Mark emphasizes the importance of a single-hearted devotion to God and God's intent for humanity. Oh, the foil to Jesus, his teaching and his summons to follow were the religious establishment. Mark records the running argument from those first encounters in Capernaum to what took place amidst the residents of the Galilean shore to the very streets of Jerusalem. Then after they failed to trap Jesus with a question about paying taxes. A young scribe approached him. The scribe came with sincerity and respect. He recognized Jesus as a wise teacher and maybe more. Jesus and that scribe together stepped away from strife. Their exchange showed an oasis of grace of reconciliation. The two joined together, affirming their conviction there is no greater commandment than to love God and neighbor. In doing so, they declared what became three key elements of the Christian faith. Belief in one God, a wholehearted devotion to God, and the embodiment to love for neighbor. Moreover, they modeled how to treat one another as neighbor. Their witness silenced the Pharisees, and later that day, Jesus pointed to that widow by the temple who didn't hold back, who was all in when it came to loving neighbor. This is what happens when love breaks through. It astonishes, it heals, it contrasts, it shows the better way for life when instinctively we're ready to take up a survivalist mindset. Being people with smarts, we show love right now by practicing best health practices. Stay home if you feel sick, 
Observe social distancing. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. Joining the Red Hand Patrol by washing your hands frequently, using hand sanitizer, not touching your face. And being persons of faith, we endeavor to live love in other ways. In Bible times, when devastation and lingering danger caused the people to live in terror, a man of faith named Isaiah spoke God's word to his neighbors and fellow citizens. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. His words accompanying declarations made by others who when challenged by fear-evoking circumstances gave faithful responses. Like the psalmist, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Or the disciples John, God's love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. The Apostle Paul, God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And we recall what Jesus himself told his followers, a good word for us to grasp today. Here on earth, you're going to face many trials and sorrows, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Friends, with global pandemic and social crisis surrounding us, I encourage you to begin each day with a prayer that Jesus spoke. Hear, O people of God, the Lord is God, the Lord alone, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And then put into practice the love commandment that arises from this prayer. After all, through our baptism, our lives were marked by the sign of the cross. God's word declared we are the beloved of the heavenly parent. And by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God seals his promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, we can give a inspired response to what is surrounding us. We can assist instead of avoiding, comply instead of complaining, prayer instead of worry, share instead of hoard. So let us attend to that neighbor next door or across the street in this congregation throughout this community. The pandemic pandemonium has created a torrent of toxic stress for all of us, but especially for those whose livelihood now teeters and for all who struggle with emotional anxiety at this particularly difficult time. That is why we will take time to check in, let our neighbors know that we care and that God cares help them keep their minds off the endless news cycle, which only steers up fears. And we remember to take a step back whenever we feel slammed by something we hear on social media or a news broadcast, and ask whether or not what we heard was factually true. Then consider whether there is something we should repeat or not because repeating it may only increase the anxiety of other people. We also keep in mind that stories about closings are positive, not negative, no matter how the news media chooses to portray it, or the urgent voice sounds alarm. These actions are good steps to slow the spread of the virus 
They are taken to help us all survive this thing. And if we venture out, whether to take a walk in the neighborhood, a trip to the store, or some other appropriate outing, let's offer everyone we meet a warm and understanding smile to go along with a sincere question. How are you really doing this day? Finally, there's something else each of us can do from the safety of our home. We can be community, even during this season of social distancing. Today, immediately following worship, I want you to write down the names of 14 to 21 persons you know. Then each day, call two or three of those persons on your list. Share stories and concerns, laugh together, and even pray. And while we need to avoid physical presence, we can continue to remain in community. We can continue to love each other, even as the Lord loves us. My friends, could it be this global epidemic holds for us an exceptional opportunity to be church in Lebanon County. Most of our friends and neighbors rarely attend worship. Some say, I believe, but how many know the gospel? Right now, persons desperately need to know they count for more than statistics. By living the love commandment, we give witness there is a God who cares for them personally. Could it be that our presence today as ambassadors of peace and compassion will prepare the way for our neighbors to explore tomorrow the life that Christ Jesus offers them? Could it be that through the good work of the Holy Spirit, the Lord enables and commissions ordinary you and me to be for others a presence of faith a presence of peace at a time when we do not know what tomorrow will bring. This is the day. And now is the time for us to show how we love our neighbor by pouring ourselves into loving each other. God's perfect love cast out all fear. And God gives us that love to share. And don't you agree Right now, we need a lot more love and a lot less fear. So let's go all in. Let's pour our entire selves into being and sharing this love. Amen. Give us the time to heal the worries that press upon us and tumble into a state of anxiety. Renew us in the image of you as the Good Shepherd and in the promise that Jesus made, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In this season of uncertainty, use us as a presence of calm and as an ambassador of your love for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Lord, according to your mercy, come, come near, near to heal and, and to bless. We pray for all affected by the coronavirus for reasons of health, life disruption, employment, economic. We pray for persons who feel the crush of pressing concerns and the fear, anxiety, and plans. Send your spirit upon them that each may look upon Jesus and experience the peace that goes beyond understanding. We pray for children and youth whose daily routines have radically changed and who grasp what is happening around them with various degrees of understanding, protect them from harm. We pray for world leaders that they may come to understand and embrace the reality that we are a global community and together can establish peace and well-being that remains unattainable as long as nations look only to their own welfare. Make the voices of peacemakers heard. 
We pray for the land and the farmers who prepare the ground to receive seed. We pray for creation, affected by climate change, tainted by pollution, scarred by human disregard. Help us to once again assume stewardship of water, air, land, and creatures. Lord, your servant John declared, God is love, and your son, our savior, instructed love for you and neighbor is the greatest commandment. Teach us to love as unconditionally as you love us. Lord, according to your mercy. Come, come here, here to, to heal, heal and, and to bless. bless. Amen. Amen. We pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, your will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin, sin against us. us. Save, Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. A big thank you goes out to the band, to Pastor Dan Donmeyer of St. Luke's Lutheran in Schaeferstown and our tech crew who made this worship service possible today. I also want to thank the volunteers who assisted with Fresh Start, a shelter for homeless persons that took place at Freedens over the last two weeks. Beginning tomorrow, two new ministries start. One is Prayer Line. When you call the church office, you would press one for the secretary, but press two if you want to leave a prayer request that we will then share with our prayer team. During the noon hour, 12 to 1.30, someone will be available to answer the phone live to talk and pray with you. We also begin errand patrol. Some of you, the elderly, persons with underlying illnesses, shouldn't go out of their homes at all. And we want to be available to run errands like to the grocery store or the pharmacy, call the church office, let them know the need, and a member of our errand patrol can help. We continue with our Lenten discipline of support for our sister congregation in El Salvador. You can send your donations, since we are not here present to put our coins in the coin jar. You can send your donations for this scholarship or send your prayers to our sister congregation here at Freedens. Registration continues for the nursery school, and also we also uh, invite uh, persons who have some talent at putting slides together to be part of our tech crew as we go live over these weeks, but later when we're back in the sanctuary to prepare worship slides. Big smiles. Hearty greetings, a listening ear. These are ways we can help our neighbor. I want you to know that every day in my own prayer seat, I lift up you in prayer. As I hear your stories, as I hear your challenges, I hold you in prayer. And I try to keep in contact with many by phone. Let's do that for each other. It is a way that we can give evidence that God cares. We love our neighbor as God has shown love for us. God bless you this week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. 
and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Uh,